Ho, oh, this is Tom's, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. You know the uh, saying, even a blind squirrel finds a nut sometimes. Well, let me tell you, this blind squirrel has found him a nut, and he is really excited about it. I mean, this is, this made my day. Well, it made my week. Maybe made my month. This is something really excited. I, oh, God, just choke. I'm, I'm so choked up about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm really excited. I just got this today, and I'm really excited about it. I didn't know exactly what it was until I opened it up today. Something I've been looking for for years, for years. And just trying to get it at the right price. Because it was... When it first came out, kind of expensive for what it is. And the price went up and up and up and up because it was a valuable resource. And let me just show you what it is. It's this book right here, Shortwave Receivers Past and Present. And there's two major versions of this. One that just came out in 2013, which was an update to this. So it was this one plus new radios, and then this one, which were re communication receivers from 1942 to 1997, and it's, it's just a packed, it's over 400 pages, and it's just packed with sh communication receivers, and a little bit of information about every one, a nice picture of them, and this, this is the third edition of this particular version, and this is by Fred Osterman, and when I, I saw this on Amazon, I'm always watching for books on Amazon, used books, mainly, and I, I saw this one on Amazon this weekend in the used book section. Now, this book, even though it's an older version, can, for new new copy, can sell upwards to $150, because it's kind of considered a collector's item, depending on the quality of it. So this one was in the used area, and you could you can get this new. This was in the used area for $15, and in the comments, it says it had some markings where the author had autographed it. And I'm like, hmm. That sounds like a collector's item, and a guy only wants fifteen dollars for it. And this is on Amazon, Amazon and their used books. So I thought, what the heck? I want to get it. So I got it in the mail today. And what's really bizarre is it has a protective cover. Isn't that cool? And then I opened up the first page, and I'm looking at it. I go. You know, that's a signature right there. That's Fred's signature. That's cool. And then I see over here, and I don't think you can see it. Let me see if I can zoom in. Gosh, I'm excited about this. Move the book over a little bit. i got to be very careful. I want to treat this thing with kick gloves. This says, Contributor's Copy, Alan Johnson. Thank you for your assistance on this publication. And then it's signed in blue ink, and it's even smeared a little bit here, um, Fred Osterman. And this is serial number 51, dated 4 7 which is when this was published. <laughs> it is cool. And, it's of course, it's brand new. And it's got hundreds and hundreds of radios in here. Matter of fact, it has 467 pages. And like I say, there's a new one out. I think the new one is about $50 for the new one, which covers from 1997 to 2013. I'd love to have that one, but I'm not going to pay $50. And of course, since it's so new, there aren't used ones out there, I don't think. But here's, here's just some examples and again, I'll zoom in a little more. 
So this is what each page is like. Like here is a Collins 51S. I had one of these at one time. It's a ham band only um, radio receiver. It tells you all the technical details about the radio. Coverage, sensitivity, selectivity, um, physical size and weight. And then what it's, and again, this is dated 1998. What the price rating was new and what you could get it for used back then. Now, Collins radios have, used radios have gone through the roof. I mean, big time gone through the roof. This radio probably now would go for $1,500 to $1,000. And the main, main reason that this has gotten, these Collins radios have gotten so expensive is the, the people in Japan are collecting these things. So they're paying big bucks to get them. Now here is, I'll just give you a few examples. Here is a Collins 51J4. I have this radio. I have this right now. It was restored by a friend of mine and he restored another one. So he had two. So he gave me this one, which was, I think it has a little scratch on the bottom or something. So he gave me that one. And it's, matter of fact, I could show you it real quick, like, maybe. Actually, this one right here, I take that back. This one I have in this room, so I could ever zoom in on it. That's a 75A-4. My 51J is down in my workshop. So, so you can see I am a collector of these old radios. I have... Let's just say I have a lot of them. Let's just say that. <laughs> uh, and uh, here's a Hammerlin HQ. Oops, let me get it back in the screen here. HQ 178. I have one of those. Matter of fact, that's down in my workshop right now. I have also, I have the, the I got a number of Hammerlins. Uh, I have, yeah, I have the A version. Here's the plain version. I also have the 150, HQ 150, and we could, I could spend an hour going through this book and tell you about the radios I've either have or had or what. Oh, here's a radio that I've been trying to snag. This is a Panasonic. It, it's not that, tr some of these radios are not that terrific unless they're really tuned up. But here is a Panasonic RF3100 and there's several of them in this series. And this thing now, I've been trying to capture one of these off of eBay and they go for like three to four hundred dollars. And it's just, it's just, they're just collector items. Nothing really fancy about them. Here's another one that I've been trying to snag off of eBay is this Panasonic RF 4800. I had I had a chance to buy one of these about 15 years ago at a ham fest for like a hundred dollars. Oh, I should have done it. I should have done it. These are also going for two to three hundred dollars now. So you can see why I'm really excited about this book. This book is a wealth of information if you're into old used radios. Actually, here's one that's, that I've got. Here's my DX302 that I've showed you, and here's my DX394 that I've showed you. So I am really excited about this book. I'm going to have to find some place to keep it nice and pristine. And I just, I was so excited. I just, I can see I just came in the mail. I wanted to show it to you. And let me take my zoom away. I'm trying to figure out why I couldn't get the darn thing in the picture. It's, uh, I'm zoomed in. So here's the book. Again, you can get these. You can get them used, you know, and probably dog-eared and stuff like that, which the information is still good for from 15 to $25 used.
on Amazon. They've got a number of I just checked, and there's probably a half a dozen used ones. And the one thing I have found about buying used books, especially in this field or this hobby, they're typically like brand new. I, I don't, I'm not sure um, how they're getting on Amazon, you know, whether they're finding them someplace in a, in a publisher's warehouse or something, but I have bought hundreds of these types of books and related to this hobby from Amazon for just peanuts. I, I would say three quarters of my collection. I only paid a dollar and three ninety five shipping. This was free shipping, so it was fifteen dollars flat out. That was it. All I had to pay. <clears throat> it was in the Amazon warehouse, and how it got there, I have no idea. So anyway, I'm really excited about this. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.